Hey guys, it's Eric here at LearnMax, and what I have for you tonight is a little bit more like a lesson in DSP than a tutorial, but it's kind of a cool one to know about anyway. Uh, okay, raise your hands if you've ever heard of something called the Nyquist rate. Okay, how many have heard about that? Um, maybe some of you, maybe a bunch of you, hopefully a bunch of you. Anyway, um, raise your hands if you've heard of the sampling rate. You've heard that, right? Okay, so anyway, the, the two are very much related. Sampling rate, what, what the Nyquist rate tells you is Nyquist uh, established that in order to sample a signal, you have to sample it at twice the highest frequency in the signal. Okay, so if you have, you know, audio, which generally you want to go up to like 20 kilohertz, you have to sample at least 40 kilohertz. Okay, and what that assures is that you don't have any aliasing of the signal. Or at least in terms of in the in the range that you're interested in. Okay, so if you sample it double that, you wind up with no uh, aliasing. You don't wind up with these uh, basically images of the spectrum that is in the audible range that, that causes false images. Okay, so normally, even if you're you know just sampling everything just fine, if you really looked at the spectrum, you could see you know because it's all digital because things are are, are at, at intervals, you would wind up with you know all these aliases that are way up uh, beyond the audible range, and you normally just kind of filter them off and you can't see them. But uh, if you don't sample high enough, you you can see what happens. And using the spectrum analysis tools that are built into Live, I can kind of show you. Okay, so let's let's take a look at a, at some waveforms here. Okay. Okay. Now that's what's downsampling turned on. I'm using the the uh, redux uh, effect to kind of demonstrate this. Okay, so here's my regular uh, spectrum. I have a spectrum analyzer going on for this uh, kind of cool sound I have here, and I'll even uh, turn off a little bit of the animation here, so you're not going to hear kind of as much kind of crazy stuff going on. We'll just kind of turn on you know, sort of a fundamental. Hopefully, hear a little bit. Uh, All right, so we have a little bit of uh, sound going on. All right, now as I downsample, what's going to happen, you're going to see these additional frequencies kind of creep down into uh, the spectrum. Okay. Now if I turn downsampling back to, to a normal rate, you're going to see a little bit going on, but you're not... Uh, you know, hearing that aliasing going on. Okay. As I turn them up, you can start to see them. Now, this is with a logarithmic scale, so things look a little bit different. They look kind of compressed out there. So I'll go over to my uh, my spectrum analyzer. I'm going to turn it into a linear scale. Okay. And when I do that, as soon as I do that, you can see that what's happening is I have all these images of my spectrum. If I set it down to one again. Things should be sort of back to normal. I'll make this a little, you know, a little funkier, and you see all the energy down at the lower end. I'll let this animate and kind of so you can see where things are really. You know, here's the energy where I expect it to be with this kind of bass sound. But if I start downsampling, all of a sudden my spectrum I'm getting multiple copies of things, and they're getting more and more pronounced. And if I turn that to hard see more kind of going on okay so that's uh, what's happening if you don't don't sample at twice the uh, frequency of the highest sound in there so it's kind of cool you know it's a cool effect and it gets you know used a lot uh, these days you know you get that kind of you know cool you know yawk or, or yoy kind of uh, talking bass effect using that and that's all uh, you know kind of a good use of uh, you know more or less uh, Errors, uh, kind of go, it's errors in, in representing the original sound or, or, you know, basically sampling it at the wrong rate and causing distortion. So it's very cool. Anyway, so uh, if you're ever interested, you know, look up Nyquist, learn more about this. You know, this is the couple minute version of it, but, you know, something to be aware of. So that's why we want to keep our sampling rates up nice and high so that we don't uh, get all this aliasing and noise and all that kind of stuff in there. Okay, so that's the first part of this uh, lesson. Uh, check out one of the other ones to see more about my AdMorph Max for Live uh, synth device that I was kind of showing around in this one. Uh, you should check it out. Okay, have a good one. Take it easy. Bye.